Recently, I compared Rodinal Dilutions 1 plus 25 and 1 plus 50, and even more recently, I did the same for D76's Stock Solution versus 1 plus 2. Both yielded very interesting results, and before you watch any further, I suggest catching up on those because today, I'm going to pit them head to head to see which one comes out on top. Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and on this special episode of the Darkroom Knight, it's Kodak's D76 versus Rodnall in a fight to the dev. Hey, if this is your first time here, I review film photography in all its glory through experiments, history, and more. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Today's comparison isn't just going to be about image quality. In fact, that will only be one factor because the truth of the matter is you are not going to care how it looks if it's too hard to mix or too expensive. You may actually overlook a reduction in quality for the sake of saving time. Because of that, I'm going to compare the two developers as follows. I will look at cost comparisons. I will go over the total workflow for each. We'll take a look at developing times. And finally, I'll show you how each looks side by side given the same circumstances. Not all of these comparisons will be cut and dry. Maybe one developer is more expensive than the other where you live, or you prefer a look that I don't. But I think this will be a great guide for you on the sort of questions you should be asking yourself. Okay, let's take a look at our first category, cost. We are going based on dilutions I reviewed for each developer. I'll be using B&H photo pricing and US currency as my guide. My numbers are based on the idea that you develop one roll at a time with 300 milliliters of developer. A gallon of D76 is $12.99 and does 16 rolls of 35 millimeter film at full strength. That's 81 cents a roll. Remember, this is using the developer and reusing it until it's exhausted. If you want to take the same gallon, but one shot it, you'll only get 12 rolls. Adox Rodinol is $15.99 for a 500 milliliter bottle and that will develop 43 rolls of 35 millimeter film and that's 37 cents a roll. If I use a 1 plus 2 dilution with D76, I can get about 37 rolls and take that cost to about 35 cents a roll. But if I go 1 plus 50 with Rodinol, it's 18 and a half cents. So D76 1 plus 2 beats Rodinol 1 plus 25 in terms of cost, but Rodinol has the cheapest overall. Next up is mixing. Powders are messy and wearing a mask and eye protection is a good idea because even though you can't see it, you may kick up fine powder. I also need to heat up my water for D76 to 50 Celsius. Rodinol is a liquid and not even syrupy like Kodak HC110. You can also add a little bit at a time. The advantage D76 has here is Rodinol has to be precisely measured in small amounts each time. The advantage Rodinol has is that D76 needs to be mixed all at once and used within about three months in a partially filled bottle. And near the end of that, you'll probably want to adjust your developing time to compensate for a now weaker developer. I've heard people mix small amounts of the powder at a time and not see any issues, but I've also heard people say you're not going to get evenly distributed ingredients unless you use the whole bag at once. So today we're just going to stick with Kodak's guidelines. Rodinol will be your choice if you are not developing often or if you can't store large amounts of prepared developer. Uh, use D76 if you prefer easier mixing instructions and plan to develop at least six rolls a month. Next up, developing time. Developing time is about the same for each dilution pairing. D76 is a time of 6 minutes 45 seconds for stock and 13 minutes for 1 plus 2, and Rodinol has 7 minutes for 1 plus 25 and 13 minutes for 1 plus 50. This was intentional on my part so you can see how a 7 minute development and a 13 minute development compare to each other. The other consideration that I think a lot of people miss for developing time is preparing the solution. For D76 at stock, it's just pour and go, and for 1 plus 2, the math and pouring is really easy because of the large amount used. Rodinol needs to be measured in the tenths of a milliliter at times, which makes smaller variations give bigger results. On the other hand, if you are developing D76 at stock and it's cold in the dark room, you'll need to compensate with time or figure out a way to raise its temperature. If you're diluting, you'll have some control. 
uh, with Rodinol, 10 milliliters of developer won't change the temperature of 500 milliliters of water, so you can get your temperatures right much easier. Okay, here's the big one, the look. As stated, all of the examples here were taken with the same roll of film, then split into four strips. For Rodinol, I have one at 1 plus 25 and 1 plus 50. For D76, I have a strip dev at stock and one at 1 plus 2. A few of you asked why I didn't use a 1 plus 1, which is arguably most popular, and there are two reasons for that. A, I wanted to see a greater difference from stock, and B, because a 1 plus 2 has the same developing time of 13 minutes as Rodinol's 1 plus 50, and we can see how both compare. First, we will compare Rodinol 1 plus 25 to D76 stock. There is quite a bit of difference here. D76 gives a flatter negative, allowing you to bring out more contrast, if you like, while Rodinol has more contrast from the gate. D76 is, in my opinion, quite a bit sharper, and Rodinol's grain is clumpier and coarser. Looking at Rodinol 1 plus 50 versus D76 1 plus 2, we get similar results. Both will be flatter and more sharp than the last examples, but I think the difference here is while Rodinol is still more contrasty, the sharpness difference is less obvious. Take this with a grain of salt as a bump in the lens focus, a negative that lays a little more flat these things can skew the results, so this slight difference may not be just the developer. Last of the negative comparisons, we look at Rodinol 1 plus 50 versus D76 stock. Very similar in the mid-tones, though Rodinol has an open shadow and D76 better highlights. Also, as the highlights progress, the difference becomes less noticeable until you could barely see the separating line. I'd be curious as to your thoughts regarding the negative comparisons. I would have to say my favorite negative was D76 stock because a flatter negative allows me the most control in the darkroom. If I want something punchy out of the gate, I think we can all agree Rodinol 1 plus 25 is the answer. In the other videos, we looked at darkroom prints as well, and now we can compare those results with each other. First up, Rodinol 1 plus 25 and stock D76 with a 2.5 contrast filter. Unlike a computer scan, a true silver print is going to show you much more of a film's differences. It's not nearly as forgiving. This is pretty dramatic too. The numbers at the bottom are exposure times in seconds, and you can see that Rodinol at 50 seconds is about D76 at 20 seconds. I noticed that even though the whites of the highlights are about the same, Rodinol has more grain. Here are the more diluted counterparts, Rodinol at 1 plus 50 and D76 at 1 plus 2. Less of a difference, but still striking. The 10 second exposures look similar, but then we see a bit more deviation as we go, but only by 10 to 20 seconds rather than 30. D76 has a smoother, flatter look and takes less of an exposure time, while Rodinol is rough, textured, and chunky. As you saw in the last two videos, I also did a Contrast 5 comparison, but in this case it doesn't reveal anything that we didn't already know here. Uh, the Rodinol negative requires a longer exposure and has, for the lack of a better term, coarser grain. Uh, if you want to see how the Contrast 5 filter results look, I'll have the high resolution images along with this transcript in the description below. So there you have it, Codex D76 versus Rodinol in a fight to the dev. And I'm curious about your thoughts and which came out on top for you. I imagine some people want a harsh look while others want something a bit creamier. You may want an open shadow or you may want crushed blacks. As for myself, I've been using Rodinol for the last couple of years. However, I hated the results here when I compared them to D76. I never thought I would be a grain gawker 
cut Rodinal is really ugly when you put it beside the Smooth D76. Not only that, but even though it's a powder, being able to just dump and go is an alluring benefit, especially in the summer when my chems sit at about 68 Fahrenheit on their own. What is a pain in the butt is having to heat up the water for the initial mix with D76, and I can't use it right away either, as it needs to cool down. It also gave me curly negatives, which is already a problem with Triax. I will continue to use Rodinol, but if I think I have some really important rolls of film to develop, I may take the time to use D76. Once it's there on the shelf, it's super easy to use, and I loved the results. Well, that's all for now. I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider becoming my patron on Patreon. I offer early access to my videos, your name in the credits, and free prints. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, and until next time, stay classic.